Hi, boys and girls. Uh, this is Chapter 5, Lesson 1. Uh, for this lesson, you will need a focus note page, and you should be following along on your focus note page what you see me writing up here on my big focus note page. So questions or problems go here, and then the notes are going to come on this side. So um, grab your note page, and let's learn about integers and how to graph integers or graphing integers. Uh, remember, uh, in the lab, which you've already done, you learned what integers are, positive and negative whole numbers, not the numbers in between. And also remember that we talked about how number lines can be uh, horizontal or they can also go vertical. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to officially do is define an integer. What is an integer? And uh, oftentimes I am going to be highlighting key vocabulary. So there's key vocabulary word, integer. What is an integer? If I was going to describe it in words, I would say this. It is positive and negative whole numbers and zero. So I just described in words what we highlighted on our number line. Positive and negative whole numbers and zero. It is not the numbers in between. I'm going to make a t-chart with just some examples. So on this side, integers. And on this side, non-integers. Here are some examples of integers. 9 is an integer. 125 is an integer. Negative 8 is an integer. 3,422 is an integer. Negative 54 is an integer. 0 is an integer. Negative 172 is an integer. I could go on and on, but it is this, positive and negative whole numbers and zero. Now I'm going to give you some examples of non-integers. One half is not an integer. Four and three-fourths, not an integer. Zero point four is not an integer. Negative 2 and 1 third is not an integer. Negative 6.2 is not an integer. 4.8 is not an integer. So now you can s contrast integers with non-integers. A non-integer is going to have a fraction or a decimal part. Integers positive and negative whole numbers and zero. Okay, so now you got um, integers, the meaning of an integer. Next, we're going to talk about graphing integers. And we're going to graph the set graph graph the set of integers on a number line. And the integers we're going to graph are negative 3, 2, and negative 1. So now we're going to talk about graphing integers. Graph the set of integers on a number line, negative 3, 2, and negative 1. 
So first we need a number line. And I'm going to put zero right here and I'm going to follow the model that we made yesterday. My positive integers count this way. My negative integers count this way. So now I've got a number line. When you are graphing integers, you always put a point on the number line for that integer. So if I want to graph negative 3, I would put a point right here at negative 3. If I wanted to graph 2, I don't want to go there. That's a negative 2. Positive 2 would be right here. Positive 2. So I'm putting a point, a circle, a dot on the number that I am graphing. And finally, negative 1. If I'm going to graph negative 1, that's a positive 1. I want a negative 1. I'd put a point right there. So graphing integers, you need a number line. Your number line should follow the model that we made yesterday. And you're just putting a point right on whatever the number integer you're graphing. I'm going to add my arrows onto this. So part of your practice today and your workbook is going to be this. Graphing integers on a number line. Put a dot where it goes. Another thing you're going to practice today is you're going to be given a real life situation. And it's going to ask you what integer would represent that situation. And what would the meaning of zero mean in that situation? So let's do a few examples. So again, situation, which you'll be given the situation, integer, and meaning of zero. What does zero mean in that situation? So I'm going to make a table for these problems. Situation. And I'm going to make a column called integer. And finally, meaning of zero. So let's go through some examples. Again, this is practice you're going to be doing today. The situation will be given to you. Let's say you're playing a board game and you move back three spaces. So that is the situation. You're going to move back three spaces. What integer do you think would represent move back three spaces? Well, the key word in that situation is back. If you are going to be moving back, you would be moving in a negative direction. So the integer that would represent moving back three spaces would be negative three. What would zero mean in this situation? If we're playing a game and uh, you're, what's the meaning of zero? And we're playing a game where you move forward and backward on a game board. Well, zero would mean you don't move. You don't move forward and you don't move backward. You don't move. So the meaning of zero in this situation would be don't move. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You don't move. So integers are used to represent a variety of situations. It could be playing a game. You're moving forward or backward. Uh, let's say I'm telling you that you have a gain of $10 to the amount of money you have. Gain of $10. Well, what integer do you think would represent a gain of $10? Gain is the keyword. If you're gaining something, it's more things you're getting. So this would be a positive $10. 
10. Gain, that word indicates a positive, so a gain of $10 would be a positive 10. What would zero mean in this situation? Well, if you're talking about money and um, zero would mean you don't have any money and you don't owe any money. Here it was moving on a game board. In this situation, zero means you don't have money or owe money. You don't have any and you don't owe any. You don't have positive money and you don't have negative. Negative, of course, would be meaning that you owed money. Um, let's do one more. So I hope you're catching on that, that integers can represent real life situations. Your book is going to give you this. So the book will give you this part. Your practice today is going to be, well, what integer is represented by that situation and what's the meaning of zero? So read carefully. If there's two parts, you've got to answer both parts, integer and meaning of zero. Uh, finally, let's say that you dive down into the ocean 10 feet. Dive down 10 feet. What integer do you think would represent dive down 10 feet? Again, there's, you, there's a key word that you're trying to find that's going to indicate a positive move or a negative move. The word down, I would use negative 10. So in this situation, what would zero mean if we're talking about diving down into the ocean 10 feet? And this, uh, we already talked about this in, our, in the lab. Zero in this situation would mean sea level or the surface of the water. Negative 10 means negative 10 down into the water. A positive number would mean above water. So today, you're, the work you're going to be doing on some practice problems is graphing and on other practice problems, your work is going to be this part. I'm going to highlight this in pink. You will be doing two things for a lot of problems. You will be finding the integer that represents the situation and describing the meaning of zero in that situation. Okay, the last thing I want you to take some notes on are key words for integers. Because the vocabulary, like back, gain, down, the vocabulary is very important. So key words for integers. Um, so we've got some key words like back and down that indicate negative. So I'm going to put, I'm going to make a T chart here and I'm going to say these words indicate negative integers on this side and then on this side I'm going to write words that indicate positive integers so we've already talked about some below let me tip the camera so we get some more room here um, below indicates negative a loss would indicate negative, a loss of money, or if you lose. Uh, some more would be subtract. If you subtract from something, you're going to indicate that with a negative integer. If you take out, if you go to the bank machine and you take out money, that is going to be a negative to your account. Another word that's often used with money is withdraw. If you go to the bank machine and you take out money, it's the same thing as if you go to the bank machine and you withdraw. If you owe money, that is indicated by a negative integer. If you owe money, another word that means that you owe is you are in debt. D-E-B-T. If you are in debt, $20, that would be a negative 
$20. Um, down, that would also indicate a negative integer. Back, if you move back or backward. Um, decrease, a decrease would also be a negative integer. Uh, there's more. Uh, as we think of more, we, can come, we will come back to our notes and add them. Another one that you'll see with money is they often use colors. If you are in the red, that is a color that indicates that you owe. So if you're, they, sometimes they will say, oh, we're, our business is in the red. That means we're running negative, okay? Um, okay, positive. Positive words. Above, a lot of these are the opposites to um, the negative numbers. A gain would be a positive. If you gain, that's going to be a positive integer. Um, add, if you add money to your account, positive. Um, if you put in money into your account, that's going to be a positive. Another word that's often used with money is you deposit money into your account. So deposit. Um, up, if you move up, that's a positive um, integer. Forward, if you move forward. Um, increase. Earn, if you earn money. And again, there's more words than this. As we think of other words, we can add them. Um, another color, like red, indicating you're in the negatives. A color that indicates you're in the positive is black. You're in the black. So if you're running a business, you want to be in the black. You're making money. You have positive money. If you are owing money, you would say that your company is in the red. Again, these are very important keywords for integers. These words are going to indicate negative integers. These words are going to indicate positive integers. All right. That does it for lesson one, and you will get the practice pages in your workbook. I will see you again for chapter five, lesson two.